if you've been in crypto for you know any longer than a few months you have either seen something like this or you have been a part of something like this uh, this is a classic classic crypto pump and dump and I'm going to share with you some characteristics of crypto pump and dumps or just in general is why cryptos dump because if you can learn why cryptos dump and then use that to avoid getting into those type of things then that will lead you or give you a, a greater possibility in, into getting into something that's actually going to go up uh, over time and so uh, I want to be very clear uh, that, you know, everything that I'm going to talk about in this video, as usual, we're talking about long term strategies. We're talking about finding uh, projects that we can hold uh, for a while. Most people can't hold anything for longer than two days or, you know, uh, really a week. Uh, that's why so many people struggle when a project like 100 comes along that makes you hold <laughs> makes you hold for a minimum a minimum of, of 100 hours uh because you know people have access to their funds for the first time in their life and you know uh they've never managed their money before and they're wearing their emotions on their sleeves and they're jumping in and out of stuff right but this isn't what this is i'm gonna i'm gonna show you uh, what this is in a minute. So the first type of dump that I want to talk about is the influencer dump. Um, and this is going to be the most common type of crypto dump. And this is what it looks like. Okay. Uh, there's hype, right? There's a bunch of hype going up. And then at some point, days later, perhaps weeks later, uh, what have you, there's this massive uh selling massive dumping right and and then eventually it turns to nothing right so let me tell you how this works because there's a specific uh thing that needs to happen in order for this to happen right if you have a cryptocurrency and everybody comes into the cryptocurrency uh evenly you know, everybody's investing money, right? You only have tokens that you bought, so on and so forth. It's very difficult for a chart to look like this. Okay, it's going to look more like a steadily going up chart, like 100. Okay, um, but the reason why you have charts that look like, and there's several of them, like, you know, I'm just going to run through some i'm going to talk about all of them but you know and here's one of the uh ones that i talked about recently uh you know as soon as that video came out this started dumping uh, all their tokens right uh the reason why this is is because these people are being given tokens okay so i guess i got to go back what makes the pump happen in the first place what makes the pump happen is uh, the developers will contact influencers and all of the influencers will uh, do social media stuff all at one time in a short window, like the first two or three days. And so you get all of this interest right into the project and this is what makes it go up. OK, so the question you have to ask yourself is, why is it that uh, these people are willing to do that? Well, it's very simple. Uh, money. <laughs> That's the reason. Money. They are not buying tokens. They are being given tokens, whether the influencer itself. In this case, we're dealing with BitBoy Crypto right whether he's being given tokens to talk about it or whether it was his idea obviously he has contacts uh around the industry so all he has to do is say hey influencer you know here's some tokens 
pump up your tokens right and and then you know uh we'll sell you know when you know it goes up a bunch and we'll make a bunch of money right that's how this happened if everybody was buying tokens right you would have some people selling you might even have some dips but you're not gonna have this and that's because these people did not buy these tokens they were simply given them from the developers and as we go along i'm going to demonstrate that okay here is another project right this is the same guy uh the 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 same dude that you know keeps taking advantage of people uh crypto bit lord or wherever his name is this is the dude that created mom he created another crypto called molly look at what happened right and believe it or not after he dumped this he created another token called molly because something was wrong with this one <laughs> something happened with this one so we need to make another one right so let me show you what it looks like right when you're just giving tokens now this is detailing what they're calling the top traders now what this is supposed to be is showing you know uh when people bought something and when they sold and you know the top traders well look at the top address the top address bought no tokens, zero tokens, yet they made $1.1 million. Hello? Yeah, that's a top trader when you're trading air, bro, and you're getting $1.1 million. This next person uh, did invest $32,000. They got $900,000. This person, one transaction, invested four hundred and fifty one dollars some kind of way got three hundred and twenty nine thousand here's another person who didn't buy any tokens a hundred thousand so i can just look at this and, and tell i'm speculating here it, it really doesn't matter who it is the bottom line is these people either didn't buy or they didn't buy a lot um uh, this is probably the developer here and these are probably influencers ones that didn't buy and ones that just probably bought a little bit and say hey you know i'm buying a little bit just you know so their audience can see hey i'm in it i bought a little bit right um you can see that these are similar amounts right here so he must have been giving out people uh similar amounts of tokens 38,000 35,000 right this is how this happened and so here you are you're on social media right and you're seeing these people who you you know respect that you probably shouldn't and you know you're like oh they're getting into such and such token i'm gonna get in with them not realizing that they haven't bought any tokens and they're just using their influence to dump on you here's another one uh this one um you know i don't know if this was like a coordinated influencer thing but you had a bunch of influencers talking about this. In fact, you know what? I don't have to speculate. Let's just find out. Let's just find out. We don't have to speculate. Let's see what we find. Well, what do you know? I did not test this before the video, guys. I like doing stuff like this because it's like you, you see it when I see it. So you get a real reaction. The number one trader bought zero tokens, cashed out 220000 Here's another person bought zero tokens, zero, 160,000, zero, 157,000, zero, 120,000, zero, 99,000. So yes, this was a coordinated thing, right, with influencers um, who hyped up Grok. You know, what is Grok? Nothing, nothing to it. And they're cashing out hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they're dumping on the, you know, unsuspecting person that's following all these people. Okay. So this is the influencer dump. That's how that works. It's not fair. It's not like they're buying tokens. 
they're being given token. And if I if I really felt like it, I could go into these wallets. I could track the wallet like I did in the uh, Gorilla video. Here's Gorilla here. Uh, I could go and track the wallets and stuff. I, I know that they're connected, right? But I'm not going to do that because I just want you guys to understand how it works. So typically, if you see a bunch of influencers at one time, right, talking about something all at once, nine times out of the 10, 99 times out of 100, that is an influencer dump that's getting ready to happen. Okay, and this is the most common type of crypto dump. Okay, um, now let's talk about the second uh, type of dump, and that is what I call the inflation dump. And there's no token that I can think of that represents uh, inflation, inflation more than the two tokens that I'm going to talk about. One of them is Filecoin which is an absolute ridiculous uh, nothing coin. Um, it was created by the Winklevoss twins. Uh, it's about decentralized storage, but you don't need the token to do decentralized storage. It, the token is unnecessary, right? And so the way that this works is it's similar to the influencer scam uh, or the influencer pump and dump but it's done at a much more sophisticated level. And in fact, I'll show you this right here. I'm pretty sure that this guy is being paid uh, to talk about this, right? Um, he's saying, oh, 30X potential that Filecoin could go to $180, right? And, you know, there's a bunch of people liking this and so on and so forth, okay? Let me tell you why I think that this is absolutely 100,000% impossible. Uh, companies like this do also pay for people to say stuff. They pay for marketing and all of that, but they rug you at a much slower pace. And they do that by designing inflationary tokenomics. So what am I talking about? Right now, Filecoin is reporting, according, according to this website, that there's 492 million tokens, right? But the total supply is almost 2 billion tokens. So what that means is there's 75% more of the supply that's still yet to come out. And the current valuation of that supply of the total supply is $10 billion. So if this were to 30X, 30X, it just takes a little simple math here, this would be $300 billion at the current uh, circulating supply, or, or I should say the total supply, which would put it close to Ethereum or maybe even surpass Ethereum at this point for a token that's absolutely useless. Ethereum is required. You have to have Ethereum to, you know, uh, interact with the Ethereum network that a lot of people use. You don't have to have Filecoin. So just over years, over time, they're just going to slowly trickle out uh, coins. And, and the question you have to ask yourself is, why do this okay so here's a website one of the top websites in crypto uh for you know venture capitalists and institutional investors i don't know how uh they reach this status they, they you know probably a relationship or something because i've been in crypto longer than these guys uh but mazari is con considered like one of the top uh research firms right and so I just want to show you right here um, that these numbers are listing revenue, okay? And so initially, <laughs> initially, I'm like, oh, they're making money, right? So you see here, quarter two, 2021, there's revenue 
of 866 million, then 95 million, then 49, then 9, then 19, then 11. Okay. So I'm like, what? They're making money. How is it that they're making money? No, they're not making money. What they're actually tracking, I have never ever seen this. What they're actually tracking is they're counting the inflationary nature of their token as revenue. They're counting them printing Filecoin as revenue, right? And the way that they break it down, they actually say, why do we need to do this? Because we have providers that are providing the storage capacity. That's, that's what the, the centralized uh, storage uh, means. They're providing the capacity. And so in order to do that, they need to be incentivized to, to provide the storage capacity. And so the way that we incentivize them is we just give them tokens. And we're counting this as revenue. This is wild. Like this, this, this is one of the wildest things I've ever seen. So what do you think is going to continue to happen when you're just giving tokens away? It doesn't matter how it's done, whether it's staking or, uh, or whether it's, you know, some, some type of other thing. When you freely give tokens away, right, uh, people are just going to sell. They're just going to sell. They're not going to hold, um, you know, like th they only see short term, right? And in this case, uh, I would certainly be selling because there's 75% more tokens yet to be released. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to give any, you know, like it's common sense. <laughs> if you have 75% more tokens that need to be released and you're already at 10 billion, just for them to maintain their market cap, that means they probably have to go, uh, you know, to, you know, a dollar twenty-five or something like that. But this person is telling you thirty x. Uh, it's a joke. Okay, another type of inflationary token, and and this uh, I was actually involved in. Uh, this is one of the most scammiest things that I've ever seen uh, in uh, my life. Um, I was, you know, fortunate enough to, you know, get into DeFi very early. And uh, one of the first tokens I, that I got in was Cake, okay? And uh, long story short, you know, there was Cake staking. And so you would buy the cake and then, you would just be given free cake to stake it. Now, the interesting thing about cake is the, the token actually had value and still does have value in a use case. So they weren't just giving you tokens for no reason. You were able to stake cake and they would actually give you other tokens, right? So you could stake cake for other things, right? So some of the tokens that, uh, I was given were like real projects like Trust Wallet, uh, Seedify, um, Injective. Uh, I got all of that stuff for free, right? Uh, and I and I did that just by simply holding cake. But they were also doing staking, and so you would get free cake as well. And so, due to the popularity of cake, it grew from a dollar to like 40 something dollars right and so that's how i was able to help a number of people become millionaires because uh we bought even less than a dollar right um however they never stopped the inflation it kept going they just kept going with it and so even though you know people were participating and new projects was coming on board the inflation kept going, right? But but that's not the dirty part. I'm going to tell you what is one of the most uh, under 
or maybe possibly never told stories, right? And hopefully this video won't get striked or something because I don't know that anybody has ever talked about this, but this was one of the dirtiest things that um, anybody has ever done, right? So first of all, again, the reason why I brought up this Filecoin situation is because they're listing revenue, uh, they're listing inflation as revenue, right? And even though Cake doesn't list it, they were doing the same thing. In crypto, generally speaking, people don't get paid like in regular money. They get paid in crypto. So one way to assure that people are going to work for you is you just give them free crypto tokens. And so PancakeSwap was literally funding their entire operation off of this free minted cake that, uh, you know, uh, they were giving themselves. OK, not unlike what I just showed you. But here's the thing. Once they recognize that, hey, you know, this thing is having trouble staying up. Gee, I wonder why. Um, because you're just giving out free cake. I don't remember the dollar amount, but one day, you know, I woke up and I see, hey, there's this new type of cake staking, right? And you can earn more interest if you stake your cake for longer, right? So we were used to getting, you know, like uh, maybe 100% APR on cake. And you could take it out at any time. You could take it out in one day or two days. Uh, of course, the longer you stayed in there, the the more you made. Um, but you you know you could take it out whenever you wanted. Well, now you no longer had that choice. You had to now lock it up for a specific period of time. And the longer you locked it up for, the higher the APR. OK, so lots of people uh, came to this platform and, and they decided to lock their tokens up for like a year because what was advertised was this very high APR if you, um, you know, stake your cake for a year. OK, um, and long story short, that APR wasn't true because it can't be true if the price is changing, right? So let's just say, you know, the price was $15 when you staked it, okay? By the time you were able to unstake this, for a lot of people, uh, cake was a dollar, right? And I'll just show you here. It went from 40 something dollars to $1. Right. You could just look at it right here. Here's May uh, 2021 is thirty dollars. Right. And let's go to May 2022. It is uh, what? Six dollars. OK. And, and, and May 2023 is a dollar. All right. Just and so whatever APR was advertised. If you go from ten dollars to a dollar or six dollars to a dollar, you're going to lose all of that. On top of that, um, the APR that they advertise kept going down because when you have staking, you're only able to give out so many tokens to people. In fact, I don't know if this is accurate, but they have um, these numbers here saying that 443,441 cake has been distributed. Okay, that sounds like a lot. But at today's prices, you know, that's about, what, 1.2 million? Even at uh, $20, that would have been 8 million, okay? Cake is a billion-dollar company. OK, you see the market cap here is seven hundred and thirteen million. Right. So even if it was eight million worth of tokens. 
right? That's not enough tokens to crash the price from $44 to a dollar. So the question is, how did it get from $44 to a dollar while so many people could not sell? Even if they wanted to, they couldn't sell because their tokens were locked. And the answer is simple. It's because while everybody else's tokens were locked, the developers and the team behind PancakeSwap was selling the whole time. They were funding their business operations. They were paying their developers, all of that by selling K tokens right under our noses, right? And, and there's several reasons why I know this, but I'll just tell you very plainly. Once I figured out that, you know, there was, you know, so much inflation and that, you know, we were just going to go down, you know, around twenty dollars. I, I never expected it to go to a dollar that I would have lost that bet. But I knew that we were going to go down more. They had an opportunity for you to go and create a proposal. Right. You can see here uh, that. See, they have voting. OK. And since I was one of the largest cake holders in the world, I started petitions about we need to eliminate the inflation completely. We just need to stop it. Just stop the inflation. And if you want to reward people, you reward them with a separate token. And then you figure that out and maybe don't pay people, you know, too much APR. Just pay them something. It's going to be better than the bank. And every proposal that I put out would get a lot of response and it would get a lot of support. OK, until one day I woke up and now the voting is different. So now you can no longer vote with your regular cake. See, we just had re regular. We didn't have this stupid V cake or whatever it is. Right. So in order to get this V cake, you had to lock up your tokens for a longer period of time. So let me give you an example. If you had a um, hundred thousand cake, if you only locked up your tokens for a week, that hundred thousand cake might turn into like fifty thousand cake. I I'm sorry. That's not true. No. 5,000 cake. So if you have 100,000 cake, and, and I had more than that, but I'm just giving you an example, then if you locked it up for a week, your 100,000 cake was only worth 5,000. And if you locked it up for a month, it was only worth maybe 10 or 15,000. If you locked it up for six months, it might have been worth like maybe half the amount. But if you locked it up for four years, your 100,000 cake ended up being worth like maybe a million or something like that. But you had to lock it up for four years. So what people did, and they had to be insiders within uh, the cake development team, all of a sudden when these proposals came out, they had millions of votes and the votes were always against the proposals that that I would put out. OK, I'm giving I'm giving you all the tea on pancake swap. They were always against that to the tune of, you know, millions in cake because, uh, you know, the proposals that I would put out would have millions in cake in support. Right. And. It, the only way to combat that would be if if uh, people locked up their cake for four years. And that wasn't going to happen. Now, why were they able to do that? Because they gave themselves cake for free. So they could easily take a million or two million cake. Right. That they gave themselves for free that they didn't pay for. Lock it up for four years. And now you have, you know, 20 million, literally 20 million votes. Like there, there was one person that had 20 million votes all by themselves. And they were voting down all, not just my proposals, others as well. 
right? Because of this whole thing that they created. Meanwhile, the whole time they're selling, right? And people are stuck, right, in this staking for a year and can't do anything about it. This is one of the dirtiest things that ever happened uh, in crypto. And I don't believe anybody has ever told this story. And it's because, you know, Cake is a, uh, a Binance, uh, you know, application. Or at least it's, you know, funded by them. And they have a lot of power. Right. And I don't have any problem with Binance. I don't I have zero issues with them um as a as a company as a program they do a lot of philanthropic work they are awesome um they have a great blockchain that i use all the time i have no i'm just specifically talking about what happened with this the other thing that happened is they actually changed the team like i believe the team all cashed out which is probably what i should have did <laughs> up here Right. And without telling anybody, they changed teams, not even the Twitter account changed. They kept the same Twitter account. Uh, they kept the same developer account, all of that. But all the people behind it changed. But to the public, it looked like the same people were running. And to my knowledge, if there's something, go find it. To my knowledge, there was never an announcement about, hey, uh, our head developer is leaving. We're changing this team. This team member is leaving. That th There was never any announcement about that. So we're all thinking it's the same team involved, and it wasn't. So this is the worst type of inflationary um, token dump that you can have where it requires you to lock up your tokens for a long time which I understand the locking up because, again, people don't know how to control their emotions, right? But to, to if in order for something to work, everybody has to play by the same rules. You can't have one set of rules for some people and a different set of rules for a bunch of people. You can't have a few people that decides to be selling and selling and selling and selling Right. Underneath everybody else's noses while we're all holding. Right. And then on the on, on the front end, you're putting up the front that, hey, everything is good. Nothing has changed. It don't work like that. Right. So that's what Cake did uh, to, you know, a lot of the holders. Um, and it turned off a lot of people. And so the reason why it started to come back a you know, now a little bit is because guess what they decided to do? They decided to, you know, reduce their inflation. And wouldn't you know it, it starts going back up. So at the end of the day, they listened anyway. <laughs> they listened anyway, right? And what do you know? It starts going up, but only after, you know, the price has gone down from 44 to, you know, $1, okay? So you have your influencer type dump, which happens the most. And then you have your inflationary dump by things like Filecoin and K. And there are, there are literally, you know, uh, hundreds of these inflationary things. XRP does it. ICP does it. Uh, Worldcom. Uh, you know, pretty much anytime you see like, you know, the national news come out and talk about a coin. That's, you know, somebody that's very connected, like the Winklevoss twins or, you know, something like that. And they pay instead of paying these regular Twitter people, they're able to pay Bloomberg and Coindesk and, and Cointelegraph, the big media. So now it comes off as as more esteem and you get more people in so you can dump on them. Right. So. Now that you know that, now that you know how tokens dump, I'm going to show you something. And it's actually, you know, uh, a, a, a similar situation for different reasons as a lot of what I showed you. OK, in the last video, briefly, I talked about bias. OK, what is bias? Bias is aiming to be 
like the first decentralized bank. Right. The reason why people do business with banks is typically they want somewhere to put their money and they want interest. The problem is the bank doesn't have a business. <laughs> banks don't have businesses. The bank's business is your money. That's their business. Their business is your money. So they actually take your money and they charge you for your money. That's what they do. What are you talking about? How? Because you give them money and they sell you products like a mortgage. And when you take out a mortgage, you pay fees and interest. Well, they can only provide these mortgages in part based on the deposits that people are giving them. This is the dirtiest business in the world. You can literally, if you have a certificate from the government, you can literally set up a building and some cubicles, right? And some glass, pexy glass, and put some tellers in there and a safe with no money in it. You can start the day with no money in it and you can run a bank. That's how crazy banks are. All you had to do is wait for people to bring you cash. And then you can start cashing out checks and different things like that from other people's money. And you're charging fees on all of that, right? And then anytime a bank wants to shut down your account, they can. For any reason or no reason at all, right? So on the base level, what Bias is trying to do is... They're trying to be a decentralized bank by paying you interest directly into your wallet based on the activity in the network. So if there's no activity, you don't get anything. But if there's activity, you automatically, you don't have to do anything. You automatically receive these payments in your wallet. And the beautiful thing about bias is uh, it's deflationary from the very beginning. One uh, percent of all transactions. I don't know if that's on the site, but one percent is burned. OK, so everything that you do, one percent of the transaction uh, is burned forever. OK, but again, when this came out uh, to incentivize people. They did something similar uh, like cake and they incentivized people who would stake by giving them tokens. Right. And, you know, wouldn't you know it? What did people do once you gave them those tokens? They sold it. What did they decide to do? Now, now this is going to blow. <laughs> this is going to blow your mind. OK, here is the bias Twitter page. Official bias. And they tweeted that uh, today on the day Bitcoin was created, uh, this was uh, January 3rd, uh, we burned over 83% of the supply of bias. And they left the proof and the transaction. Uh, so if you click on that, that brings this up. This is what I love about crypto. You can't lie. You can't hide. Right. Here is the proof right here. There used to be uh, what, like 100 billion bias. And you can see right here, this is a burn address. Right. That's why it's got all these zeros. And, uh, you know, this is like not a real address. Right. This is a burn address. And you can see that. It has 83 billion tokens. That's crazy, right? And you can, if you scroll down here, you can actually see the transactions. Here are the transactions here. The first transaction was for almost 68 billion. And the next one was for 15 billion just burn now listen people can sell and do whatever but there's a lot that could have happened with 83 billion tokens they could have pocketed that 
<laughs> right they could have paid themselves like this is millions in uh tokens right but they decided not to do that they decided to burn it and since then and before then as i said every transaction burns bias so you see it's 20,000 8,000 8,900 59,000 29 all of these transactions are burning bias all of them okay the issue that we have with fiat money is inflation that is the issue that we have right so how do you combat inflation you can bat it by first of all stop inflating right make your currency worth something backed by something and then to make it even more scarce you actually make it deflationary so what their goal is their goal is to keep building things right that require bias which is going to pay the people who are holding bias more bias right and as they build more things which are going to require bias like for example the staking program that they ran you couldn't just get the free bias you had to actually hold some bias as well and that kept the price in the range for a while until you know it got to the point where the inflation you know kept happening and people would just sell 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 right but now that they burn those tokens and they're not giving away more bias right the only way that you're going to be able to earn it is by holding it in your wallet so you have to be a holder to receive it you can't sell it <laughs> and still get it you have to hold it to receive it so that is going to create potentially if it works a network of holders and as they continue to build things it's just going to have more and more people required to hold by it so like a you know a banking network so just imagine if there's like you know a hundred thousand people right holding bias uh, and they're all receiving payments not even every day every time a transaction you know happens okay now again all of this is you know future stuff nobody's using this yet as i told you guys before um you know and and they're still building and you know there's yet to be really anything that has taken off but obviously they're not quitting and the idea is sound and just like hundred it's super 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 early right so now that you've learned you know what not to look for these are the type of things that i look for deflationary and worth something the reality is ben was never going anywhere because there was no use case for it we could talk about influencers dumb it, it was never going anywhere because influencers got free token let's just keep it real but there's nothing to this there's nothing to molly there's there's nothing to it there's nothing about grok this token is not tied to elon musk even elon musk came out and said yo this has nothing to do i don't have anything to do with any crypto i don't even think he named grok specifically but he did temporarily shut down the grok twitter account because they were linking it to elon musk and there's literally nothing to this yet you know people are buying this stuff so it's only gonna go in one direction when there's no substance right whereas with cake again cake used to be one of the most valuable tokens to hold because it gave you other tokens for free so literally all you had to do was hold cake and like i said it gave you trust wallet it gave you injective and it was giving it giving us these projects at super super low value like you know we were early investors in these projects I, I i think i had injective at 30 cents i don't remember where trust wallet was 
But I, I think all those projects, 100X. All of them. I didn't keep injective to, you know, the $40. I sold it somewhere. I don't know where I'd be lying. I did, you know, I think I held it maybe a little bit more than a 10X or something. Uh, at the time, they weren't doing anything. So that's why I sold it. They weren't, they weren't doing nothing. <laughs> so now they've just developed uh this new product which sounds really really interesting uh i don't know if they go back far enough but i'm telling you uh that i got injected for free at like this see there you go it was like 30 something cents like when it first came out right and i knew that to, to to uh hold on to it i think i might have sold it maybe eight dollars or something like that because they weren't doing anything right um uh, but uh you know they started working and now they've come out with this incredible product um that i won't get into now um but you know uh, it has a lot of potential again not too many still not too many people are using it but they're already worth three billion already worth three billion uh as i mentioned before bias uh i don't know what they're worth but it's not a lot Right, it might be like a hundred thousand or something. <laughs> like nobody knows about this, so you 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 see, uh, you know the uh, potential uh, of this if they're able to build even you know they've already built hundred. If they build other things that require you to hold it, and you're getting paid to hold it, um, and there's no more free lunch, just more free tokens. It's got a lot of uh, potential. That's how we're going to roll in 2024. That's why I did uh, which cryptos uh, I'm holding for 2024. I hope you watch that video. Uh, check that out. But it's really simple. Uh, and then once you get in these projects, just hold and, and, and chill out. Right. Don't be trying to jump in every few days or a few weeks, even if there's a dip. Right. How, how many Bitcoin dips have there been, guys? right but over time it just keeps winning right it's your boy bsg i'm gonna holler at y'all in the next video